This is a yin yoga class designed to open the heart space, the spine, and the hips. You may want to have a few props with you, a couple of yoga blocks or something similar you could use to support your body and maybe a firm folded blanket as well. I have a mat here, but you could certainly practice on uh, a carpeted floor or another padded surface. We'll begin today in a reclined position. I'll invite you to lay down on your back and bring the soles of the feet to touch, knees open wide. Take a moment to adjust the distance the feet are from the hips so you can feel a comfortable but not overstretching sensation through the lower body. Tuck your shoulder blades underneath you and maybe center the head. If you do feel your knees are reaching too much toward the floor, you might take a couple of blocks or pillows and support the knees to help moderate the stretch. We'll hold once you are here in your stretch, your recline butterfly for one minute. Here as we relax into this stretch, you might let your gaze soften. Or perhaps the eyes might blink closed. Perhaps bringing attention to the breath. Noticing and welcoming as is possible the sensations that are arising in the body perhaps a gentle stretch through the lower body. Taking an opportunity now to gently close the knees, maybe stretch the legs a little bit and roll to one side, maybe your left side for a momentary rebound or release in between our second round of butterfly reclined stretch. So our rebound is an opportunity to let the body come back to a more relaxed position between our stretching sensations and poses. I'll invite you to roll back to your back and begin to make your way back to your reclined butterfly. Again, same options, adjusting the distance the heels are from the seat, maybe choosing to use blocks or another prop under the knees, and then settling in for one more minute as we hold here in our reclined butterfly. You might choose to tuck the shoulder blades underneath you and Allow the gaze to soften or the eyes to close. You might bring awareness back to the breath. Noticing and welcoming the sensations in the body as is possible. If you are experiencing discomfort and you can adjust your stretch with a prop or a body position, to minimize that discomfort, feel free to make those changes at any time. We're looking for a comfortable stretching sensation without working or straining too much. Once again, I'll invite you to gently draw the knees together. And maybe roll to one side, maybe the left side, using your bottom arm as a pillow for an easy rebound position for just a few moments, allowing the body to come back to rest. Transition into our second pose which is a 
supine twist. I invite you to roll to your back once again. This time drawing the feet and knees uh, close together as is possible. Arms stretch to a T-shape here perhaps, or maybe just down by the sides away from the body. And we'll drop the knees to the right as we shift the hips left. So the hips might shift slightly left as the knees drop to the right. I'll invite you to try to keep the knees and hips stacked here. If your left shoulder comes up off the floor, that is a-okay. But both, both shoulder blades might stay grounded and sense into this twist as we hold here. If you'd like a little more sensation, you could cross the top leg over the bottom leg. Or conversely, cross the bottom leg over the top. Experiment a little bit to find your twist that's going to feel like a really nice release through the hip and spine. And pause here for just a minute, softening into this stretch or supine twist. And then gently coming back to a center constructive rest position. So knees are bent, soles of the feet on the mat. And knees pointing skyward, gaze skyward. And we'll take a second round of twists to the same side. So the, maybe the feet and knees come close together. Maybe they touch. The hips shift left. The knees drop right. Your left shoulder may lift or it might stay grounded on the mat. You can choose to cross the top leg or the bottom leg over the top to intensify sensation in this supine twist. And then I'll invite you to stay here and breathe in this twist, perhaps sensing into sensation in the outside of the hip, through the spine, a gentle twisting opening sensation. Here for just one minute. using the breath to help you welcome sensation as it arises as best you can. And then uncrossing the legs if they are crossed, drawing the knees center back to that constructive rest position, hip center, feet grounded, knees pointing skyward. Just a few breaths here, a neutral center position. And you might begin to walk the feet back closer together and maybe the knees even touch. We're setting up to take this twist to the second side. The knees will fall left as the hips shift right. You might even pick up the hips and set them slightly to the right. And then allow the knees to drop left. Again, trying to keep the knees and hips stacked here as is possible. Option, if you'd like to intensify this sensation to cross the bottom or top leg over the top. And this time it might be your right shoulder that lifts away from the mat and that's okay. 
you might also find that both your shoulder blades stay grounded. We'll be here for just a few more moments. Enjoying the supine twist. Breathing into a gentle stretching sensation without overworking or straining. If your legs are crossed, I'll invite you to uncross your legs and gently make your way back to center, bringing the hips back to center, knees pointing skyward. We're setting up for one more round on that side. We'll pause here for just another breath or two in constructive rest. Allowing that rebound the body to just gently come back to greater ease and relaxation. And then bringing the feet and knees close together, we'll drop the hips to the right as the knees fall left. Same options, top or bottom leg could cross to intensify sensation. Right shoulder might lift away or it might ground down. Breathing here for about one minute. Softening as is possible into sensation, maybe through the outer hip, maybe through the spine. You might uncross the legs and make your way back to that constructive rest position, hip centered, feet grounded, knees skyward for a few breaths here. Just enjoying that gentle rebound from that supine twist. We are headed to a seat next. So you might roll to one side first and then gently walk yourself up using your hands to a seat. We'll set up for caterpillar pose, which is a lot like a forward fold. So legs extend long in front of you. You might bend your knees as much as you need for comfort here. You could even use a blanket or some blocks to support the knees so you're not working too hard to keep the knees bent. And feet fairly close together, if that's comfortable, just rounding over the legs, making contact somewhere on the lower body and allowing the chin to drop toward the chest to take this stretch through the length of the spine, maybe even the back of the head and through the top of the head even. Allowing this to be a gentle Releasing stretch without working too hard. The legs might roll open slightly and that's okay. When we forward fold, our awareness of the breath might become heightened as we can feel the torso expanding against the lower body. You might bring some awareness to the breath here. Moving to that rebound. Just walking yourself up to a seat. Tall seat here, feeling the heart space broadening open and feeling some length in the spine stretch through the crown of the head. 
We're setting up for a second round of caterpillar. Again, knees can be bent as much as you need, maybe even supporting your legs with some blocks. And we'll round over the legs for our second round here. Again, you might allow the legs to roll open. No, hands might rest somewhere on the lower body. Allowing the chin to fall toward the chest. Seeking a gentle stretching sensation. Not overdoing. Using the breath to welcome sensation as is possible. Easing out of this, maybe walking the hands back toward the hips and coming to that tall seat once again. We're heading to our next pose, which is lying on the back. This is called banana asanas. You might scoot to the center of your space, roll back or come to your back any way you like. And we're stretching the arms and legs out to the four corners of our space. And maybe making an X shape with your body, stretching fingers and toes to the four corners of your space. From here, we're C curving the spine to the right. So you might even pick up the shoulders a little bit so you can draw your shoulder to the right. And you might pick up the pelvis a little bit and draw your hips to the right, creating a C curve or a side bend through the spine. Your right leg stays and your left leg crosses over the top of the right. The arms might stretch toward the right as well creating a banana shape, hence the name of the pose, banana asana. I'll invite you to ground both hip bones or sit bones equally to the mat and adjust your arms so the shoulders are unstrained in this posture. Sensing into a stretching sensation through the left side body and maybe the front of the left hip even. Making adjustments again as is needed. So this is a comfortable stretching sensation. Perhaps thinking about directing the breath down into the left hip and side body. Sensing into that expansion and stretch there. Our rebound and release is a roll to the right side. When you're ready, you might uncross the legs and bend the elbows and then roll to your right side. Just for a moment, you might stack the knees and hips for a breath. Enjoying that sense of rebound or release back to a more relaxed, gentle, easy sensation in the body. We're heading back to that X shape lying on our back. Arms, uh, arms and legs stretch to the four corners of the room. We're C curving to the right, same side, C curving to the right. So you might pick up the shoulders to C curve the shoulders. You might pick up the hips to C curve to the right, same side, curving to the right, left leg crosses over the right. The arms might stretch toward the right as well. 
and then make any adjustments as is needed. And settling into this second hold on the right side. And once again, our release is to a right side lying position. So uncrossing the legs, bending the elbows, and then making your way to a right side lying position for a breath or two. And you might roll to your back once again. We're taking that banana asana to the left side. So find that stretch, fingers and toes to the four corners of the room. And again, you might pick up the shoulders, this time shifting them to the left, maybe picking up the hips and shifting them to the left to see curve through the spine. Right leg crosses over the top this time. And the arms might stretch to the left as well. And allowing the shoulders to be unstrained here. So adjusting the arm placement as is needed. Grounding both hip bones or sit bones equally to the earth. And making adjustments to find the stretch, maybe some sensation through the right side body and the front of the right hip here as we hold. Our release and rebound this time is to the left side lying position. You might uncross the legs and bending the elbows and knees, roll to the left side this time, left side. Pause here on your left side, maybe stacking the knees, resting your head on your bottom arm. For another breath or two. And we're heading back to that stretch. Fingers and toes stretch to the four corners of the room in that big X shape. Then C curving left, maybe picking up the shoulders as is needed to curve the spine to the left and picking up the hips to curve the spine left in that side bend position. Right leg crosses over the top. Arms could stretch to the left as well in this C curve, banana shape through the body and then adjust shoulders, hips to find a really lovely side bend stretch for a few breaths here. We'll be here for about one minute. And sensing into as much ease in this stretch as is possible. Perhaps directing the breath into the right side body, front of the right hip. Noticing and welcoming sensation there and adjusting if you find discomfort is arising.
We'll be here for just a few more moments. Our release is to that side lying position on the left. Gently uncrossing the legs, bending elbows and knees, be an easy roll to the left side for a few moments. Perhaps noticing that rebound sensation in the body. And then you might walk yourself up to a comfortable seat. We're headed into a wide leg forward fold or a wide leg child's pose. So first option is bringing the legs to a, a wide V and just allow the legs to be comfortable and then hinging forward at the waist, you might use a block or some stacked blocks to bring the earth up. You might even layer your hands or your forearms to rest your forehead in a comfortable wide forward fold. Their option is wide leg child's pose for a similar stretch. So you'd come to seated on your heels, bring the knees as wide as is comfortable, and then sinking forward into a child's pose. Again, you could rest your forehead on a block here or resting on the earth, stretching the arms forward. We're looking for some sensation through the lower body, some stretch there. So find a pose that feels good for your knees and hips today. And we're heading into that one minute hold. You might find your legs roll inward a little bit, and that's okay. Do your best to find that stretch sensation without working too hard here. I invite you to work yourself up out of this and whether you're in child's pose or in a wide V, I'll just invite you to coach your knees back together and take a few breaths in a tall seat. We'll begin to set up for round two, wide leg forward fold or wide knee child's pose. Just for variation, I'll demonstrate a wide leg child's pose this round, but you might choose either option. When you're ready, moving into your wide V or wide forward fold or your wide knee child's pose, I'm looking for some stretch sensation through the lower body. We'll be here for about a minute. Perhaps using the breath to soften into your pose a little bit more and as is possible. Seeking an easy stretching sensation. 
without too much work, without strain. And I'll invite you to ease yourself out of that forward fold or child's pose and whichever version you're taking, bring your knees or feet together, find a tall seat. And take a few breaths here. Our next pose, uh, you might use a blanket um, under one knee for some extra padding. We'll set up with bringing our right foot forward and our left knee back. And then sinking into as deep of a lunge as feels comfortable for your hip and ankle here. So you might even find you can adjust the distance between your heel and your knee to find a little more stretch through the soleus muscle. That's that deep calf muscle there. And be kind to your hip flexor here. That's um, really um, important that you're not over pressing through the hip joint here. You just wanna find a gentle stretching sensation. You might use some blocks to support yourself here either placing the hands on blocks, or you might come to elbows. You could come all the way to the earth. Really about finding a gentle opening sensation in this dragon pose, one that feels good for about a minute here. You might allow the head to gently release chin toward the chest. And if your right knee starts to head outward toward the outer edges of your mat or space, that's okay. You can allow it to gently rotate. I invite you to move on out of this dragon pose. Our release here is a comfortable seat. So I'll invite you to come down to a seat either on your knees or with your legs extended in front of you, maybe even on a chair. Just a couple of breaths. We're headed back to that dragon pose, same side, right leg comes forward and the left knee is back. And again, you might play around with the distance your heel is from your knee to find some stretch through the ankle and lower leg versus the hip. And when you're ready, I'll invite you to move in for one more minute hold here. Again, being especially mindful of the left hip that we're not over pressing forward into that hip joint. Using blocks for support, hands, elbows, could be all the way to the earth if that feels good. And if your right knee starts to travel outward, that's a-okay. You can allow it to do that. We'll be here for a few more moments. Our rebound, our release is to that comfortable seat. When you're ready, moving out with ease and gentleness and finding that comfortable seat. Could be seated on your heels, 
or you might come to a seat with the legs stretched along in front of you or even in a chair. We're setting up to take dragon pose to that second side. Again, it might be helpful to have some padding under your back knee. This time it's the left leg forward and the right knee back. And once again, you can adjust the distance between heel and knee for um, a little different sensation through the lower leg, ankle and lower leg. Um, really key here that you're not pressing or over uh, stretching through the front of the right hip here. Move into your dragon pose on this side. You could use blocks for support under the hands, under the elbows. If it feels good, you could come all the way to the earth. If you are folded forward, you could allow the head to fall, the chin to release toward the chest. If your left knee starts to sway outward toward the outer edge of the mat or outer, outer edge of your space, that's okay. You can allow the knee to just gently sway outward. And take a few breaths here. Moving out, our release is just to a comfortable seat. So it could be with knees underneath you or legs stretched long in front on a chair. Just take a few breaths in that comfortable seat, just easing out of that stretch for a moment. And we'll begin to make our way back, same side, left leg forward, right knee back, heading into that dragon pose. And playing around with the distance heel to knee, use of props for support, being more upright or more rounded toward the floor. And then moving in, we'll be here once again for about a minute. Be mindful of the right hip that we're not overstretching. using the breath. To welcome sensation as is possible. If you're noticing discomfort, irritation, making adjustments here to find an easy stretching sensation without strain, without overworking. When you're ready, we'll gently move out and once again, coming to that gentle seat of choice for an easy moment in a rebound position. And we'll set up for our cactus arm posture. I'm using blocks to elevate my spine a little bit. You might choose to do that, or you could lay on the mat for this or use a bolster to length the spine. I'm gonna put a blanket down for a little additional padding. Sit at the edge of my blocks or bolster, and then lay back the length of my spine along the blocks. My head might fall off and that's okay. The, I'm going to keep my knees bent here, knees pretty wide, and maybe even allow my knees to fall in toward each other. Adjust as needed if you need to scoot your glutes away from the mat for or from the blocks for more comfort, or if you're feeling discomfort in your low back, come down to the mat. 
we'll find that cactus arm. So elbows lift to level with the shoulders and elbows are bent at about 90 degrees. Feeling some expansion through the front of the heart. Again, the knees could fall in toward each other for a little support here. And taking a few deep breaths here. Noticing sensation, perhaps opening through the heart space. Hands, elbows may or may not touch down to the earth. Might feel helpful to rest the hands or elbows on a block if they're not reaching the earth yet. And they may not ever reach the earth. And that is an okay place to be. The key here is that you're not stretching or working too hard to reach toward the earth in this posture. We're moving out to a sideline position. So just gently make your way over to your, maybe your left side, rolling off your blocks or bolster. For just a few moments here in a sideline position, and we're heading back to that supported cactus. Again, with the torso lifted on your bolster box, we're lying on the ground. And let's head back now. Sitting up and glutes at the end of your bolster, just walking yourself back along the length of it and finding that cactus arm. The feet might come out wide and then allow the knees to fall in toward each other in a supported position. Again, you could lie on your back here on the mat. If you're feeling your arms and hands are really stretching toward the earth, you might place some pillows, blankets, blocks to help support the stretch. So you're not overworking here. Breathing into this opening or other sensations you may be experiencing here through the heart space. Using the breath. Our releases to the left side. So once again, gently rolling off your bolster or blocks or rolling from the floor over to one side. Maybe the knees bend for just a couple of breaths. We're ready to make our way up, maybe walking ourselves up to a comfortable seat. Now our last stretching pose of the practice is a shoelace or a swan pose. So a couple of options we'll explore here. The shoelace is in a comfortable seat and you can start by crossing the legs, cross-legged, and then cross the right leg over the top of the left as much as possible. So the, the upper legs are as close together as is possible. Sometimes the knees can stack right over each other and sometimes they, that's not accessible. And from here, you would forward fold as is comfortable over the legs. The other alternative is a swan position. So that swan would be the right knee bent and the left leg stretched long behind you. And you could support the right hip if it doesn't touch down on the floor with a blanket or a block. So this block would go underneath the hip here to support and then you would forward fold over the legs here. Try out which position is going to feel best for your body today. I'm going to go with the shoelace pose. You might choose swan. We'll be here for about a minute. Forward folding into that swan or shoelace pose. The 
taking a few deep breaths here. Breathing into the sensations, perhaps in the outer hips, maybe even through the spine. Few more moments here. And we're easing out. And our release is a comfortable seat. So unwinding the legs or walking yourself out of that swan. We'll just take a comfortable seated posture for a few breaths. And then when you're ready, we're moving back into either swan or shoelace pose. So I'll go ahead and take swan just uh, to demo that on the second round. So right leg on top or right leg forward again for a second round. Your choice, swan or our shoelace pose. I'm going to use a blanket under my hip because it doesn't quite reach the floor. And then when you're ready, we are folding in for about a minute here. Using the breath. to welcome sensation here in the body. And then adjusting if any discomfort is arising here. Finding easy release. Allowing the head and neck to relax as much as possible here as well. And easing yourself out of your swan or shoelace. We'll once again make our way to that comfortable seat as our release here today. Any comfortable seat is welcome. And then we're setting up for our second side. So if we're taking shoelace pose, it's the left leg that crosses on top this time as much as possible. And then sometimes the knees stack, sometimes they don't. Or if you're taking swan, it would be your left knee that's bent in front and your right leg that stretches long behind you. In both cases, we're forward folding over the legs. I'm going to go ahead and take shoelace on this first round left leg over the top or left leg forward and swan. We're headed into that hold. Allowing the head and neck to release, maybe chin sinking toward the chest. Noticing sensation here in the outer hips. No releases to comfortable seat of choice, moving gently out and finding that comfortable seat of choice today. For a few breaths. 
And we're taking that same side one more time. It'll be the same left leg on top with the same left leg forward and swan. So just to demo the opposite posture, I'll take swan on the left side this time to demonstrate that. You might choose swan or shoelace, whatever feels best for your body. My hip doesn't touch down, so I'm gonna use a blanket to support that hip. And then when you're ready, we are folding in to that swan pose or shoelace, allowing the head and neck to release as is possible. And we'll be here again for about one minute. And easing out of your shoelace or swan. Once again, heading to that comfortable seated position, your comfortable seat today. For a few breaths in an easy rebound release, allowing the body to just come back to a sense of relaxation and ease. We have one final pose in our practice today, and that's our relaxation pose. So I'll invite you to come down to your back any way you like. If it feels comfortable, you might stretch the legs long, having some space between the legs and adjust the pelvis so your low back feels comfortable. Let the arms lay down by the sides, palms skyward if that feels good. Maybe tucking the shoulder blades underneath you and centering the head so your neck feels long. And if it's accessible and comfortable, you might blink your eyes closed, allowing the body to release into the mat. Allow the mind, the thoughts, the activity there to fall away. Noticing thoughts memories, sensations arising, and then allowing them to simply drift away as you notice them. Making any adjustments if you're noticing discomfort in the body whenever you need. Allow this to be a nourishing time for you to more fully integrate the benefits of your practice today. And to allow the body to come back to an easy release state. We'll be here for maybe one more minute. like you might roll to one side, maybe the left side. Rest your head on your bottom arm for a moment. If 
your eyes were closed, maybe blinking the eyes gently open. And then making your way to a tall seat here. Thank you for joining me today in this yin practice to open the spine, the heart space, and the hips. <laughs>